I have been completely lost on Black Reef Island over the last few days. Deathloop has been high on my most anticipated list since its reveal. A representative Hitman-esque roguelike wrapped in a really funky 70s aesthetic coming from acclaimed devs Arcane Studios with a really interesting multiplayer spin? And time loops? It almost seemed too big for its own good. I'm so stoked to say that Deathloop is an absolute blast, and some technical issues aside, is an incredible swan song for Bethesda on PS5. Deathloop, coming from Arcane Studios, is an action-adventure shooter with a roguelike time loop element thrown in. You'll play through the story as Colt, who wakes up on the beach with no memory intact. Ghost-like riding guiding the way, you set out to figure out just what the hell is going on. Things go sideways pretty quick, as you figure out you're stuck on Black Reef Island, challenged to take down seven visionaries over the course of a single day, segmented into morning, noon, afternoon, and night, while also being hunted down by Juliana, the primary antagonist. Die, and you restart again in the morning, items and abilities mostly left behind in the previous loop. Deathloop does a lot right. The gameplay is a ton of fun, as the gunplay feels tight and responsive. Colt really feels underpowered at first, as you're left to the mercy of the island and its inhabitants. Start to make your way through the mystery, and he powers up quick. There is a lot of variation on the guns, abilities, and slabs, which are the powers you'll use across your journey. The guns and upgrades can have different rarities and effects, where one shotgun may let you double tap to quickly mow through enemies, while another will have more concentrated bursts, letting you blow people away from a bigger distance. The slabs also have a ton of variety as well, and you can augment them in a lot of different ways. My favorite was the very Dishonored-esque teleporting slab, augmenting it to focus on distance rather than the ability to just drop kick enemies as you come out of the warp. Deathloop really lets you play the way that you want. I tend to stick to the shadows, sneaking around, but there were more than a few occasions where I just decided to destroy everything in my path. The game doesn't punish you for playing either way, and lets you decide how to approach each situation, augmenting your loadouts between timeframes. You can easily make Colt into a tank with abilities to rip through foes as you go, or just as easily, make him a teleporting ninja where you have to really watch getting hit. The loops in Deathloop are also super rewarding to get through. The game does a lot to help you along in the opening hours, but once you get through that first major quest chain, it leaves you to figure out how to handle the situation. There is a prime path to use for the finale, but how you work that path out is really up to you. It took me about 12 hours to roll credits on the game, but there's plenty more replayability as you can opt to wipe Colt's progress and try a different build. The story is also intricately linked to these loops, as Colt will learn more and more with each loop. His voice actor is incredible, and Juliana's is as well. Their banter and back and forth is fantastic, and I was genuinely excited to hear what they were going to argue about next. I was just thinking... What do you get out of this? Why are you talking to It's me? fun. You know, I was going to tell you something about Harry, but if you don't want me to... I I'm... want to know what the fuck is going on. Oh, you don't want that. You're looking for a purpose. I'm looking for the fastest way out of this place. The multiplayer in Deathloop is also mostly well executed. Juliana can invade your missions as either an AI or a player-controlled character. You'll have to hack into a signal to reopen your escape route, and for Juliana herself, you'll need to either avoid her or take her down. The sense of immediate anxiety when she invades is awesome, as she has a different ability set compared to Colt. It really did remind me a lot of the Assassin's Creed multiplayer, as she can disguise herself to look like an NPC. I had plenty of occasions where other players invaded as I was on my own mission, skulking around to try and outmaneuver and outthink them, while trying to figure out what it was that I was supposed to be doing. The rush of finding another player-controlled character is immense, especially when you're low on health and just trying to make it out of the level. The natural chase scenes and cat and mouse-like battles are some of my favorite moments from my time with the game. As Juliana, you'll want to sneak around and try and find the player-controlled Colt, and depending on whether you kill him or how long you stay alive, you'll get rewards to improve her character so she can dive in to hunt another Colt down. Both sides of the game are so much fun, and even after rolling credits, I am definitely going to be jumping back in to play a ton of Juliana's multiplayer, fighting to protect the loot. The art style and music are also perfectly suited for what the game is. The music that kicks in when you get spotted, when you're sneaking around, and how much it differs level to level are fantastic. The game looks even better running, and while it isn't a massive graphical showcase for the PS5, it does look good. Now, I did have some technical issues with the game. There was a bit of pop in, some of the DualSense features like the rumbling in your steps seemed to come and go, but most glaringly, I had a few hard freezes that required me to force restart the game. Deathloop saves itself often, but doesn't do so during a specific block of time. There was one case in particular when I loaded into a segment at noon, completed most of my objectives, pulled up the menu to look at more information, and everything just stopped. I ended up having to quit out, and when I reloaded back in, it started me back at the beginning of that noon segment. I lost about 30 minutes worth of playtime. 
Though it only happened a few times, it was really frustrating redoing those chunks, especially in a game where time loops are inherent in the gameplay. The frame rate also dropped a few times, usually when another player was invading, or when there was a lot going on on screen. It wasn't significant or prolonged, but happened enough that it made those few seconds stand out. Hopefully these are things that can be patched after launch. Few technical issues aside, Deathloop is an absolute riot that culminates in a huge finale. The 12 hours I spent with the game keep playing over and over in my mind, thinking about alternate routes I could have taken or different abilities I could have used. The fights I had against other player controlled Julianas were some of my favorite moments of this game, and I can't wait to jump back in as Juliana and wreak havoc on other cults. If this is the last Arcane or Bethesda game on PlayStation consoles, it's a damn good one to go out on, and can easily stand up for this year's game of the year. Go check out Deathloop. Thank you so much for watching our Deathloop review, and thank you to Andrew over at We the Nerdy, the guys over at Yumi and Capri, and Bethesda for providing us with a code for review. If you want to see more from us, check out our links below. Thanks for watching.